And it was a new term for me, Intermountain West. And um, I sort of remembered her bringing the term up. She sort of remembered us bringing the term up first. So here's what it turned out to be. Well, to be blunt, we sat ourselves down and said, quote, let's take the fucker on. <laughs> so, so we did. Conversations back and forth. Um, investigations back and forth. Differences in persona. Commonnesses in um, ethical concerns. That kind of stuff goes on. Well, that's the basis for, for forming a collaboration. What shows up here in, the, in this first draft, let me say, is uh, both similarity and difference. Um, where it's discovered that 750,000 square mile terrain has been violated in so many ways that parts must be abandoned. Thereafter it's discovered, thank you, Laura, that with the boundaries removed, 1,330,000 square miles becomes a new frame for the Intermountain West, and a new country wants to happen. So, who would have thunk it? Um, certainly not in the beginning. So, also shows up a kind of difference in the way we map, but not a difference in what we mean when we map. Um, for instance, there's the Intermountain West, um, um, our way of seeing with the Great Basin in it. Um, our map maker is here, is it? She's still, she don't well, okay. Um, and you can see it takes up almost a third of the country. No, maybe a fifth. That's a lot of country. Well, I'm not going to stay too long on this. Uh, so the first thing we do is we map all the cities. Mapping all the cities is really neat because it makes a kind of a drawing. And uh, we decide to stick to the states, to the, to the United States boundary, for at least this fragment of work. And it sort of shows up that the Intermountain West has fewer people than most, than most places. It's a good idea that it has fewer people because it's the most violated place on the country. Um, we think, we'll get to it later, um, that things like this took it up. Look at it. Um, it's the most atom bombed place in the country. The idea that we would be afraid of others and then bomb ourselves <laughs> in these lives is beyond belief. Reserves. We got enough armor in there to knock off the rest of the world to hell with atomic bombs. And so this is a violated place. Now, uh, so there's the, there's the uh, mapping of the influence of radiation. So with that in mind, wait a minute, we'll get one other thing out. Um, and you can see that Yes, radiation fades out, but something else happens. In some places, you're looking at 10 and 50 and 100,000 year negative impacts, particularly in the center. And uh, again, when you look at that map, it's a relief that there are fewer people there. So, what Helen and I have designed for ourselves and for Lauren is out of the, our, our force majeure works. And the force majeure works simply say, you know what, tell me when I'm five minutes into this thing. Um, uh, I'm, I'm five, five minutes in. Okay, I've got three more minutes and i got to uh, But before I do that, Helen has to read reading. So um, our force majeure works simply say, you know, our method of, of taking things from all systems weakens the systems. And we take, but don't give back. Whereas nature takes and gives, gives and takes. That's why nature gets stronger over time, and we will get, and are getting, weaker over time. Within that context, I'd like Helen to do a quick reading. <coughs> it 
is reflecting on the laws of the conservation of energy and applying them to the exploitation we have of ecosystems. Matter and energy can be transformed from one form to another. Matter energy can neither be created nor destroyed. When matter energy is transformed from one form to another, there is a net loss of available energy. This loss is called entropy. A system has been transformed and thus lost energy, moves towards higher entropy then. A system that has all its energies intact is a low en entropy ecosystem. If a forest uh, in a watershed is clear cut, all the energies in the wood are transformed and dispersed. The energies within the topsoil, that is, the energies embedded in the earth-dependent habitats, supporting the majority of multiplicity of lives, are a consequence of erosion and are dispersed. The entropy of the watershed can be increased the, but by the reversal of these energies. Since the energies so dispersed cannot be retrieved, what then, watershed? What then can we do? Um. And that's a mini description of this place. Um, so this is all the watersheds of the, well, this is all the rivers of the country exaggerated. Fewer there than elsewhere. This is um, a quick and dirty map of um, all the aquifers in the country uh, when they were healthy, before drawdown. This is a map of our present aquifers after drawdown. You can see entropy built into the system simply by suction. <laughs> this is a um, this is a heat map. It uh, will happen in the country maybe 80 years from now. Um, the, the hottest part is guess what? Our uh, our place, our little place. Look, when it heats up like that, this is this would be the farming that exists there. When it heats up, it gets cut in half to less. That's the grasslands that exist there. A lot of cattle. When it heats up, you lose about 60, 70 percent. What will they graze on? The forests that are there. When it heats up, you get maybe a 70% loss and a 70% species loss. Therefore, our proposal, seen simply, is time to abandon this place. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to abandon this place. And then, let's set in place a rehabbing of that place, where slowly, by teams, um, um, you make a... Um, a, a corridor from Canada to Mexico and bring life back there. So we took a look at the map of it from a point of view of who owns what? The Bureau of Land Management and all government entities own much of it. That is, we the people move on all of it. And so we the people can sort of tell them what to do if we if with the courage to so do. It's, in, it's in, within this context, I'd like Lauren to come up here because um, she had a way of mapping, which we copied here as a sort of thank you. And if you look, there's the Intermountain West, and there's a large white shape there, which she will begin to talk about. that a different form of mapping better carries the idea of a country wanting to form and becomes the basis for a first dialogue 
addressing such an event. We who aspire toward a nation that protects living things find it difficult to escape the irresponsible actions that have rendered vast territories of our continent unusable. The cost of living in the most violent empire in history is the cost we now assume in addressing the rebalance of catabolic dissent. We hereby proclaim an independent nation, a nation formed to support the human species, the pollinators, the remaining wild equine, the fish and soaring birds. We name our new country Rose. Rose is a coalition of watersheds. It includes the Colorado River watershed, the Columbia River watershed, the Great Basin, the Gulf of Mexico seaboard, the Pacific Ocean seaboard, and the Rio Grande. Here's our uh, analytical map of our inheritance of the as-built of the North American continent with the major waters of, uh, water bodies and the major tributaries that fall from there. Here's a contour map of uh, the North American continent. And you can see the um, as-built of the mountain ranges um, as dark black lines and the deserts in white. Uh, the sea, of course, is also white at the lowest, uh, lowest contours. You can see the Great Basin and the Sierra. Um, you can see the Central Valley of, of California. And what's tinted pink is the beginnings of the footprint of the Nation of Rose. The coalition of watersheds, as Newton and Helen have uh, already explained, uh, has the least uh, presence of human impact uh, and the most presence of the um, violence exacted in the North American continent. The orange um, dots here are um, uranium mines that are mostly um, concentrated around the Colorado River, which was the river that John Wellesley Powell is um, so well known for exploring. Um, and John uh, Wellesley Powell is also the explorer who the United States um, commissioned many explorations of, across what was known as the arid lands. And he came back with a very sensible um, way of looking at habitation of the arid lands, which was that we should live within the um, concept of the, the drainage basin that the Intermountain West was largely um, geographically about ridges and basins, and all of those basins contain the remainder of the two great ancient lakes, Bonneville and Lahontan. So while the land is arid, the basins are actually full of water, and any settlement could survive if we learned basin by basin how to govern ourselves. So his proposition um, in the 1870s and the 1880s, um, when the United States was looking to acquire the arid lands, was that we think not about land acquisition, but we think instead about um, think of, of water basin um, government. So the coalition of Rose, the country that we propose forming um, so that we can allow ent entropy rebalance to occur is in, in many ways part of this uh, um, re-looking at the Powell map. I used um, a legal <coughs> format called a convention. The UN allows uh, conventions to be read, which allow for the redefinition of country or continent. Gandhi, for example, wrote a convention that he delivered at the UN on human rights. Uh, this, what I'll read with, um, this animation of the hydraulics of Los Angeles and its relationship to the Intermountain West is a convention on the elimination of all forms of aggression on the watersheds of roads. We define ourselves as a nation for the purpose of a common language, natio, or the place that we're born, 
is a term which unites us rather than separates us in the way prior national boundaries have often done so. We do so with the single purpose of healing and supporting the watersheds of our common asset, the peaks and valleys of the Intermountain West, and forming this coalition to speak for all those living beings who cannot speak for themselves, the vanishing wild animal kingdom that still survives in Rose Cow or the Coalition of Watersheds. Convinced that the establishment of Rose will protect the well-being of the four adjacent watersheds, the Columbia, the Colorado, the Rio Grande, and the Great Basin, and taking into account that Rose's territories are within the footprint of the Inner Mountain West, like rivers, our nation's boundary aspires toward the shoreline. Part two, bearing in mind that whenever possible, we, the citizens of Rose, will not tolerate any aggression towards our watersheds, including, but not limited to, exploitive mining operations, energy <coughs> grids that compromise life forms, toxic residue burials, desecration of sacred spaces, outmoded short-term gains to support mega developments in outside watersheds. Part three, emphasizing that parts of the Great Basin, Columbia, and Colorado watersheds are highly damaged by uranium mines, nuclear test sites, and plutonium production. In addition, the Columbia River and Colorado River and Rio Grande are polluted by agricultural runoff, human waste, and industrial pollutants such as arsenic, dioxin, and PCBs. The Colorado River, Colorado, Columbia River, and Rio Grande are heavily dammed to provide power for major cities and water for agriculture drastically changes the river's ecosystems and jeopardizes the survival of native and anadromous fish populations. Part four, aware that the snowpack of the Sierra Nevadas, the Rocky Mountains, and the Cascade Range has been fully allocated for human use, leaving very little water for ecosystem functions. The current economic growth model is incongruent with the physical reality of water availability in the watersheds of the roads. Bearing in mind that global warming is threatening the coastlines on both sides of the continent and will likely have a destabilizing effect on climate throughout the world, the country of Rose is formed to face the challenges of adaptation to, to new climatic conditions and the goal of preserving life for all living beings. Affirming that Rose accepts responsibility for the glacial time rebound of our common watershed, together we organize ourselves around tending to this long-term patient waiting rather than exploiting her natural assets for short-term gains. So we're issuing a new passport to the country of Rose or the Coalition of Watersheds and uh, you can become a dual citizen of Rose. Um, to apply, you can just go to the Metabolic Studio website and um, become part of our database. This is, of course, part of the Metabolic Studio's belief that artist-led action is a true um, remaining liberty of the American system. Um, you know, we acknowledge that there are very few countries in the world where you could have an art conference and feel fairly secure in uh, criticizing the stewardship that your country has given um, the world and, and declare uh, as an art action a new nation. Um, so in a way, uh, applying for this passport is protecting your civil liberties and it's a way that we as artists can um, reclaim the stewardship of being the avant-garde, is to form movements which in and of themselves leverage uh, political ethics into um, the conversation.